Alright, so I got the dash, um, the back of the dash off. That's what the back panel looks like. Um, it is very tight, very small. Uh, you can see all the NEMA 2000 um, plugs there. Uh, you can see here, there's uh, your positive and ground bus. Looks like that's a positive, that's the ground. So I gotta figure out if I wanna put a horn, what do I need to do here? So I'll, I'll probably do some, you know, when I get to that point, I'll probably take a deep dive into all this and figure out how to best do it. Um, might even contact my dealer to see if they can give me some pointers as to how to how to do that. So, but yeah, that's what the uh, this dash looks like. It's not very big, obviously. So there's your your positive ground bus. There's some fuses here. Uh, you know, some various fuses. And then see, there's the back of the um, the switch box there. There's, you know, kind of hard to see, but that's the back of the uh, MFD. Um, all the wires here. Here's the Aramar transducer cable. So I kind of hide that in this little pocket here. See there. So I won't, I'll put this back on when I, um, uh, you know, after the video here. So um, last thing I did is... I added this light here, which really lights up this whole uh, bunk area. So um, I got that off of Amazon. It's a 12 volt light. What I did was I essentially drilled one hole here and I, I just used some um, 3M tape on the corners. So I drilled through here. This whole panel, this whole panel here comes off. There's a uh, I think six screws and then what I basically did was I tied off I tapped off this 12 volt these 12 volt lines here so this one here which kind of runs the length here and then into the dash uh, the back of the the dash here so so yep yeah, so I got a nice light there uh, it's not red uh, and white it's just white so so that's what it looks like there. These here push out this way. It then comes up just like that. So. So yeah, there's that. I'm thinking about putting some carpeting on the sides here. That might help with the um, with a little bit of insulation. Might help with a little bit of the sound deadening. So you don't get that echoey sound on there. Um, let's put this uh, guy back on here. That just snaps on there, just like that. Um, I am really considering putting that bracket on this trolling motor uh, throttle thing. So I can move this whole unit back and then drop this guy down. Um, it's somewhat annoying being annoying me, but not yet. So, uh, I added this knob here. So now I can, I can just hold it and, and run the, run the back of the, uh, or run the engine, uh, steering. Let's see here. I added this cup holder there. So my phone can sit there. Uh, this thing keeps coming off mentioned that in the last video um when i run this this guy the radio with my wireless um it's as if two radios are right next to each other so i think i gotta take off either the the corded one or just not use that so if anyone was thinking about using that um or buying something like that uh, just be forewarned about that all right, Trollmaster. So I got the Trollmaster here. This controls the kicker motor so that when the kicker is on, I can control the throttle from here. The bat, the the uh, wireless unit is in there. And then obviously it's connected to the kicker motor there. So I just go beep, 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 and goes up. 
or down. Uh, this does not do steering. So if I want to do the steering and, I, and I'm not at the helm, um, I can use this guy. So here I can uh, put it into autopilot and then I can change, I can go one degree left, one degree right, 10 degrees left, 10 degrees right. And I got to figure out how to do it. I think I mentioned in this last video, I haven't had a chance to try it, but I need to figure out how to do the point. Cause that'd be nice to be able to, you know, once when I'm catching a fish and I want to point myself to uh, an area where there's less uh, boat traffic and I need to fight the fish, I can just go, you know, go this heading and then, uh, and then it'll go that direction. So, all right. So it's hot in this in this thing. It's a big aluminum can, and so I'm trying to. I'm considering where to put fans. Uh, I'm thinking about 12, uh, 12 volt fans, so I get you know a lot of air flow, uh, or I can go USB because there's that on both sides, and then either I can mount it to the top here top here I can have it in the cup holder I can even attach it to these rails up here and have it pointing you know pointing at me so I don't I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do just yet but um, as I do more videos I show the fishing trips that I've been going on um, you guys will see all that so but yeah um, also when I'm fishing I think I'm gonna end up removing I'm probably going to keep these side ones here, but I think I'm going to remove the this whole back side here, just so uh, when I'm if I especially if I have to uh, wash down, um, they're not it's not hitting the bottom of these things here. So, all right, um, I think that's about what I want to cover in these uh, these videos. So I guess this if you're watching this video, this is part four. Um, any additions that I'm going to do, I'll, I'll make sure to bring it up. Um, but at this point, I think it's almost ready to go in terms of getting set up. Uh, actually one thing that I'm going to, uh, possibly do is, and actually I'll come back out here for that. Um, I'm thinking about changing the prop. So the prop right now is a, uh, Lexor. 9571 158-15 um, I'm guessing that's a 15.8 inch diameter 15 pitch um, when I did a wide open throttle test I was getting um, I was getting sick I think I was getting 6100 rpms um, trimmed as much as I could uh, so that was the max um, I think the max, uh, the, the limit, the rev limiter on this is 6,300 RPMs. And I was getting, I was topping out at 40 miles an hour, 41 miles an hour in the bay. I was talking to another person. He mentioned to try a four blade, um, Honda propeller. I want to say it was 15 and a half or 15 and a quarter diameter, uh, four blade, uh, 19 pitch. And he was getting 5,800 RPMs um, max at 46 miles per hour. So less RPMs, uh, but it's still in the wide open throttle range. The wide open throttle range for this engine is 5,000 to 6,000 RPMs. So well in the range of the wide open throttle range. Uh, but he was getting 46 miles an hour. And when I was looking at that per particular prop, um, it, it's good for offshore boats that need maximum bow lift. And in this boat, if I, if you've ever seen some other videos of the, this boat running, um, it, the, it actually sits fairly low on the, on the, on the, in the water. And so that bow lift might actually help get this boat a on plane a little bit faster and B, uh, get a little more fuel efficiency. So we'll see. Tomorrow I'm gonna test 10, 20, 30 mile per hour. I'm gonna get the gallons per hour 
and the um, the different rates, the fuel fuel rates, to see what kind of uh, efficiency I'm getting or kind of what kind of fuel economy I'm getting. And then I I have the four blade prop on order. I'll run that, and then uh, see if I get any improvement. Um, I'm hoping I get improvement. And uh, the the other good news is I got a second prop as a backup. Um, I know things are getting pretty hard to find, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a second prop um, uh, as a backup. So uh, based on the calculations from Honda, when I was running the calculations, this particular prop that I'm running, the 15, the 15 pitch, um, if, I, if I play with the weight numbers, it seems to recommend this, um, this particular prop, the, the three blade that I have on it now. So if this if this boat is weighed down a lot, and I'm talking about 2,000 pounds, and that could very well happen, easily happen, with three, four guys on the boat, uh, this live well, which is uh, actually that's another thing I mentioned. I, I calculated the live well um, capacity. This is roughly about 50 gallons, 55 gallons. So um, dece deceivingly big. So that's uh, 300 pounds right there. Uh, if I got a bunch of ice that I might end up putting in there as backup, or I got two uh, big uh, kill, kill bags when I'm doing albacore, um, I could easily, you know, three, like I said, three, four, pe uh, four guys. I could easily see this boat uh, with a with 2,000 pounds um, of weight on it on top of the boat. So um, might be a good idea when I'm doing those those types of trips to put that type of um, prop on there to get, um, you know, to, to get this boat going. So, all right. And lastly, here's the little thing here for that. And then, so what I like about it is this does both the, that rod holder and this rod holder. So you can see here, um, all you do to change the angle is you put this in that hole there, turn it, uh, just loosen the screws enough where you can get these things, this thing to, to disengage. You turn that guy, you know, 90 degrees to the rail and then bam, you got a fishing, uh, you got a fishing rod holder. So I like that a lot. I'm thinking about putting a rod holder, a vertical one right there. Maybe put one or something. I don't know. Um, I could see uh, me using this front area quite a bit. Um, so another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up this guy here. The uh, hatch for the uh, for the um, for the drum. Um, I'm thinking about marking the the chain and the the rope in certain increments. So that I can um, when I'm in the cockpit or when I'm in inside and I'm dropping the anchor, I can just count the uh, different line increments. So I so I know exactly how much line I got out. So that's a that's another thing that um, I'll probably do in the future here. Uh, this four degree wedge worked very very nicely for me. Um, I was able to get targets both in front and behind me. Uh, it just seems, from an angle standpoint, it just seems to look better in terms of um, you know putting out the right uh, the right angle um, transmission uh, or. Uh, um, uh, radar, you know, pinging thing. So um, I like that a lot. Here's a picture of the angle of the rod holders here. So, but yeah, that's uh, the boat here. Um, as I mentioned, I got a lot of spare little uh, little bung things. Make sure to get spare uh, ones of these. I really, really. Um, you know, recommend getting a bunch of spares of these or change out that drain hole uh, to one of your liking that you can get a spare uh, 
drain plugs. Uh, that's that's really really critical. Um, that being said, um, I think that's about all I got for part four here. So uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. Um, if you want me to go through something more in depth because you're interested in buying this 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 kind uh, this boat. Um, leave me a, leave me a note and I'll, uh, I, I've been so far pretty good about getting back to people. Um, I'm quite excited about this boat and I think uh, a lot of people have been, uh, really looking at this boat as a, as an option for them, uh, for their, for their next boat. So I'm more than happy to, to help people out and answer questions, um, give them better, uh, better videos that, than, uh, what I've seen so far. Uh, out there um, another thing I did just to let you guys know I I did update the active uh, I did update this with the active captain so uh, practically everything I had was um, in terms of equipment was um, had a down rev um, firmware so you, you really want to you know take the time to uh, do this active captain or do it via the micro SD version there's other videos about that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. Um, but it, I, I, I would uh, recommend that. And actually, when I did do that, it actually changed my, uh, my format here, which it'll get a little. It'll be. It'll take some uh, getting used to, but I, I think I'll be fine. All right. See ya.